I was back at DreamWorks for a few months just to help out on a production. I was so happy to see everyone that I used to work with. The last time I was at DreamWorks, it felt like I was just coming back home. But I feel like coming back to the studio was a very reflective part of my career and my life. As I leave again for the fifth time. Hey guys, so today will be a very casual video, you know, not really planned. I didn't really write it out, but it's really just for me to sort of explore thoughts uh, as we go along with this. So I was brought on back to DreamWorks Animation to help out on a production and I just wrapped up a few days ago and I left DreamWorks for the fifth time. So I've been back at DreamWorks five times and I've left the studio five times. But why am I talking about this now? Well, I've always wanted to talk about this for a long time, but I think, you know, leaving for the fifth time, it gave me some more space and some more things to think about as I leave the studio once again. Now, the first three times that I left the studio was kind of out of my control. It was because the studio kept going through some company changes, some studios and companies buying off each other, me switching from feature animation to TV animation and then back again. DreamWorks was where I started my first full-time job and DreamWorks is, uh, has been in my career for a long time on and off. So I just wrapped up and I'm leaving for a really exciting production and I can't wait to talk about that, but it's going to be sick. And the team that I did work for at DreamWorks, I mean, man, I've never been in a production where the morale was very high all out. Like this production has been the best in terms of morale. Everyone was super close and tight with each other and I had a really good experience and I put as much work as I could because I really enjoyed the project. I was only able to help out on this production for a few months and I knew it was going to be temporary. And I was surprised because my first full-time experience as a TV storyboard artist for DreamWorks TV was actually a terrible experience. Mind you, this was back in 2015. Like the Adventures of Puss in Boots TV was not a good experience for me just because I was also going through a visa thing, but at the same time, leadership was pretty rough. Like some of the leadership expected board artists to over animate their storyboards. And you know, you were fed this very toxic mindset of like, hey, if you don't animate your boards or if you don't do this standard of boarding, you don't deserve to be a board artist. I remember someone telling me that if let's say my boards don't make it to the final animatic, they would consider that a failure. But the thing is, storyboards not making it into the final animatic is actually a very common and normal thing. Now, back in 2015, I recall that I was nearly fired just because I wasn't coming into work during the weekend. I wasn't over animating my boards and I wasn't willing to do all of that unpaid, which they were encouraging me to do. But let's say I do all that and I have done this where I came into work, the building turns off the AC so it makes the working experience during the weekend terrible. I check in with my director, he gives me last minute changes the day before the final pitch so I have to redo the whole thing in a very short amount of time. I'm burned out, I turn in my work, they see it, they say, oh, it's not good enough, you need to do more work, you need to put more weight into it. Without figuring out the issues of the production, this was a show that had a high turnover of storyboard artists. Meaning story artists were joining and leaving at a high rate. Some people will say, oh, it was just a hard production and it had high standards, but I personally think that it was just poorly led. Fast forward to the beginning of 2024, big difference. Everyone cared for each other. It was properly led. The morale was super high. From my perspective, it didn't feel like anyone was alienated and a handful of story artists stayed throughout. So yeah, it really surprised me because DreamWorks TV was not really seen as the best place to be at. Coming back to the studio does feel like a time capsule. There's a lot of people still there that I worked with in the past. A lot of things haven't changed. A lot of things still feel like the same old DreamWorks. But I think the things that changed is that some of the people that I worked with, especially back when I was on Crudes, a new Don, sorry, a new age, I can't remember what it's called, when I was on a version of the Crudes 2, and I worked with some of the people as fellow story artists, those fellow story artists are now heads of stories, they're directors, they've moved up in rank. Those people stayed while I left for Netflix, I helped out on a few productions at Netflix, then I moved on to Amazon, then I did some freelance here and there, so I felt way more nomadic. But sometimes I do think about what if I actually chose to stay at DreamWorks back then? What if I fought hard to stay? Would my career be different than it is right now? Because 
you know, a lot of my friends have gotten promoted, moved up in their career, whereas I felt like I stagnated and I was always seen as another storyboard artist or another animator or another helping hand for production. I never really did any leadership role for anything. But at the same time, all the experiences that I've had in different productions changed my point of view. It's made me more diverse in these things. Like I've worked from children's show to to action adventure, to feature films, to adult animation. So the scope of the work that I've been involved with is ridiculously high. So in ways, I do have a perspective on things, but I never really got to settle and stay in one place for a long time. And sometimes I wonder, what would my career look like if I actually just stayed in one place? But constantly wondering about that stuff is a trap. And personally, the way my career has turned out, the way things have turned out for me, I don't regret it at all. Have I made great connections with good working relationships? Yes. Have I burned bridges? I'm pretty sure I have. I mean, I've heard people talk smack about me through the vines. My number one rule is that if your craft doesn't make you happy because the studio or the industry doesn't let you do what you want to do with it, you kind of have to do that stuff by yourself. You know, I'm glad to have been in the company of some really great people. I'm glad that a lot of the people that I've worked with have been great. Like, if you were to see me eight years ago, I would be the kind of guy who wanted a lot of money, who wants to have their own show, to be a showrunner, to be a leader. And I would get jealous or angry easily. But I think after all this experience and being around a pretty healthy community, even a small community, I think it helped me look at my own work, look at my own craft, and look at myself in a better light. So coming back to DreamWorks for the fifth time and leaving for the fifth time, I thought it was worth it, honestly. Even if my history with that studio or company has been mixed, I always try to find the best part of the job or the experience and really spend way more time cherishing it. I have a pretty strong feeling that this also might not be my last time with DreamWorks Animation. But that's the thing about working in the industry. Sometimes you'll be at a single place for a long time. Sometimes you'll leave the company and not work there again. Or in most cases, you leave the company, but you come back a few years later and you leave again and sometimes you'll come back to it. Unless you really burned some bridges and did something really shitty. Um, anyways, that's all I wanted to talk about. Bye. Interested in learning hand-drawn animation or learning how to finish an animated shot from beginning to end? Have a look at the store where you'll find the complete introduction to 2D animation video course, tutorials, and other resources. Learn classical animation approaches, drawing, lectures, techniques, and other process videos. Visit the store through the link in the description below.